Namaste. <laughs> so, I guess we should get right down to it and define entelechy. Here are the three definitions. Entelechy is the condition of a thing whose essence is fully realized, actuality. This is the general definition. And it comes from Aristotelian philosophy, where there are like prototypes or archetypes of things, elements, substances, things like tables and chairs and whatever. Uh, and these are in a subtle form. But when they become actualized, this process of actualization is called entelechy. That's the original and most general definition. But we're looking at some more specific and particular definitions. For example, the second definition, the inherent force directing an organism toward self-fulfillment. Now, this is actually the thing that we're working with here on this channel, in our community, on our course site. We are working with this force that is within everyone that is directing them, pushing them, actually, toward self-fulfillment. And we all experience this. You know what I'm talking about. The thing is that because of ignorance, in the beginning, our idea of self-fulfillment isn't very fulfilling. <laughs> So we make a lot of mistakes and we try again and again and we never give up because this entelechy is a force in our being that is inherent in us and cannot be given up. And finally, the third definition, realization as opposed to power or potentiality, self-actualization. Now, this is the specific definition that applies to our work. We would like everyone to actualize their self. And what do we mean by the self? Well, some people say the self is consciousness, but I think the self is beyond consciousness. And this is supported by the Vedas also that there are three ordinary states of consciousness. Jagrat, or waking consciousness, Svapna, or dreaming consciousness, and Sushupti, or deep sleep. And beyond those three, the state that is actually the root of these three, this is called Turiya. Turiya simply means the fourth. Now, these four states of consciousness are related to four stages of spiritual practice and realization. And you've seen this chart, if you've been watching this channel, <laughs> you've seen this chart so many times, but I'm going to show it again. And the four stages are Dvaita or the stage of dualistic religion. And the yoga for that stage is karma yoga. And that's focused on the state of jagrat, or waking consciousness. The next higher stage is called vishishtadvaita vada. And the yoga for that stage is bhakti. That is focused on the dreaming consciousness, svapna. Then we have the vivarta vada, which is about Raja Yoga or meditation. And this is for realization, exploration of Shushupti, deep sleep. And finally, we have the Ajatavada, which is for practice of Jnana Yoga, 
which is about the Turiya state of consciousness. Now, because these states of consciousness are real to everyone, then the uh, views, vada means a view, so like dvaita vada means the view of duality and so on. The views and the practices associated with those views are also not arbitrary. They're completely natural and based in everyday experience. Everybody wakes up in the morning, goes through their whole day, then goes to sleep at night and dreams, and then reaches a state of deep sleep where they are aware of nothing, but they're still aware. In Turiya, one becomes aware of all three states of consciousness simultaneously. This is the distinguishing quality of Turiya consciousness. So, what are we getting at? The development of consciousness, the drive towards self-actualization, passes through these four stages one after another in a very predictable sequence. Now, a lot of people might think this is still just a belief, or it's still just our idea, or it's still just a philosophy. But I can tell you from my own personal experience, I lived each and every one of these stages in my progress through life over the last 73 years. Uh, so I can testify from my own experience that these four stages are correct and they occur in the order given in a chart and that they describe in essence, you know, in a, in a very compact form, the whole journey of the path to self-realization. So this is entelechy. Entelechy means the development towards the final goal of an organism or being. So this entelechy, this chart, shows these four levels. And so I'm going to describe briefly how I went through and experienced these four levels in my life. What you can't see on the chart is what's below it. What's below this chart is called pashu. Pashu means animal, and specifically it means rope, because an animal has to be kept on a rope, isn't it? When we have a, a pet cow or other animal, we keep it on a rope to keep it from wandering off or a dog we put on a leash. Huh? They have to be trained. They have to be disciplined. They have to be kept within bounds. And this is also true of the Pashu Patis, huh? the, the animalistic human beings. And these in Buddhist teaching are called Putujana. Putujana means someone who is born but not instructed. So these are the vast majority of the beings on our planet today, unfortunately. But then once one of these Pashus starts to question, what is life? What is this world? Who am I? What am I? What is the highest goal? Huh? As soon as these questions begin to arise in them, that they seek some kind of spiritual teaching. And this is the beginning. This is the Dvaita Vada. Huh? Simply because we see this world, this magnificent, beautiful, wonderful, awe-inspiring, terrifying, strange, and incomprehensible world around us, we have to accept that there is a conscious, intelligent creator because nothing of this complexity and scope could arise from chance. See, this is the fundamental lie of science. Because science says that it's all just based on chance and so-called natural laws. Well, who made those natural laws? See, we know from computer simulations of the physical universe 
that the parameters of the physical constants that determine, for example, the relationships between the subatomic particles are tweaked to a very fine balance. And if you disturb that balance just a little bit, the whole universe would crash. It could never develop the form that we see in front of us today. So there had to be some intelligence, some designer, some creator. So one begins to worship that creator in whatever form one can comprehend. So there are so many religions in the world and they each have a different idea of the rules and regulations we should follow to please the creator. Well, that's all well and good. But rules and regulations are not going to bring you to self-realization. They are beginning only, the beginning step. The next step is Vishishtadvaitavada, which is bhakti. But to reach that step, one has to go through a test called the Brahma Granti. The Brahma Granti means one has to overcome the attachment and identification with the body. And then one begins to identify, instead of the gross body, the subtle body made of energy, the pranamaya kosha. This gross body is the anamaya kosha. It's made of food. But the subtle body is made of energy, prana. So it's the pranamaya kosha. So what does the pranamaya kosha do? Well, it allows us to feel emotions. What are emotions really but movements of energy, especially in the area of the heart chakra? So bhakti is about developing love of God, not merely serving God, not merely following some external or rather arbitrary rules of regulations, but actually loving God and establishing a relationship with God in our subtle form. So once bhakti becomes mature and the ecstasy of love of God is established in the heart, then one reaches the next stage, vivartavada. But before entering the vivartavada, there's another test. There's another gate that one has to go through. And this is the Vishnu Granti. Vishnu Granti deals with fixed ideas that God is this form only and is only limited to that one form and cannot be any other way. But this may be true subjectively, but certainly not objectively because God has full freedom. God can be anything. <laughs> so one has to pass this conceptual boundary and in the state of Vivartavada, then one starts to worship the formless God by meditation. And I should add that these stages develop spontaneously when one becomes sufficiently mature. Then there's one final gate, the obstacle called the Rudra Granti. Rudra Granti means that one thinks I am different from God. And to actually realize God, one has to transcend this idea of difference and come to see the oneness. Not that this is something that changes. Huh? No, we're already one with God. There is already nothing but God. But we have been maintaining the fiction of a separate self, an illusory thing called an ego. So at the Rudra Granthi, this thing has to be given up and one realizes aham brahmasmi tattvamasi sarva kalvidam brahma. So at this stage, one enters the ajatavada. In ajatavada, one performs jnana yoga and realizes the supreme absolute truth. So this is the entelechy of consciousness. And this is the consciousness, the rather the process of conscious development that we have experienced in our own life. 
And so this forms the context of the esoteric teaching, which can shelter or house or hold all known religious and spiritual truths. So in other words, this is the context within which our work is done. Actually, the work of every spiritual teacher, every spiritual group, but most of them aren't aware of this because as individuals, they have not gone through all the stages. I'm very fortunate that in my life, I've gone through all these stages and experienced them and gone through the different gates, huh? the grantis, the knots, and gone from the lower chakras to the higher chakras as shown in the chart. And because of this, this is the real meaning of the esoteric teaching, which is the basis of our Dharmasar community. Aum Tat Sat. Aum Shakti Aum.